All right, we are live cool. here with Blake Angelos from Yamaha, yep. and hey. uh, you're going to be showing off the uh, YC series keyboards. Yeah, I got my shirt on and everything. There you go. Look at that. Awesome. So. <laughs> well, hey, uh, really appreciate you being here, Blake. It's always a pleasure Absolutely. to hang out and talk about keyboards and you know yeah, hear you play some music. So uh, I'm stoked. Cool. So let's go ahead uh, if you want to switch over to show the keyboard there. Okay. There it is. Um, yeah, so the YC series. So this is the YC88 that I have in front of me here. Um, we have three models. We have the YC61, we have the YC73, and the YC88. They're um, all basically the same inside. The differences are the action. That's the main difference. So the YC61 has a waterfall-style key action. That's the organ-style key action. So it's perfect for people that are, um, that are organists that... Uh, really um, you know, like that waterfall key action, which is, uh, it, it, it's a nicely weighted action, but it still is that lighter organ style feel. So it's a great, mm -hmm. great for them. It also only weighs um, about 16 pounds, so it's super lightweight. So that's the 61. The YC73, also very lightweight. It's, it's a weighted action um, as well, but it's 73 um, balanced hammer action. It weighs just under 31 pounds, I think. I think it's right around there. So it's very mm -hmm. lightweight as well. And we kind of think of that as something for keyboardists. The yeah. balanced hammer is great, especially for electric pianos, because electric pianos have that kind of an action on it. Mm -hmm. So a nice lightweight 73 note uh, model. And then finally, the 88. This one is really designed for the pianist because it has our uh, graded hammer, triple sensor, GH3 action on it. It's called Natural Wood um, Graded Hammer, NWGH or GHNW, N NWGH. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a great feeling action. The triple sensor is really cool because it allows you to restrike the note before the key comes up off the bottom of the key strike. So for mm -hmm. a pianist, that's ideal. That's what you're looking at. So okay. those are the three models um, that we have of this um of the yc series nice and you guys have had the 61 out for a little bit right and yeah uh, so yeah the we 73 the 61 first. and the 88 those are new to the family yeah um, they're new to the family and they're new a lot of it is because we you know a lot of customers really asked for that and mm -hmm. so um we really wanted that to happen and our um our designers in ycj you know yamaha japan you know they got on it and made the 73 and 88 version um quite quickly so yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yep. Is there any differences between um, the three other than just the, the amount of keys there, or is, are they all pretty much functioning the same way? Functionally, they're all the same. The biggest difference between the seventy or the the sixty one and the other two is the XLR outputs on the back of the um, of the seventy three and eighty eight. There's just mm -hmm. isn't a lot of real estate on the back of the sixty one. Yeah, and the and we wanted to make the sixty one you know the most compact of them all. So it's super mobile and compact, but but um, all the sounds are the same. So you can still play pianos with it and stuff. But again, sixteen pounds, you know. Yeah. You know. That's, I mean, that, that's a nice thing. Definitely, and I mean, these keyboards are meant to play play live. I mean, you Absolutely. can use them in the studio, of course. Um, but yeah. you know, when if you're playing live and you're going from gig to gig, which hopefully people start doing again soon. Um, yeah. I mean, the last thing you want to do is carry a thirty pound keyboard, you know, around with you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Have if to you want sixteen to a venue. Yeah, and it's and it and it's cool. We have these great cases that that, that you you can get that are uh, they're optional, but they're mm -hmm. totally worth getting if you're playing gigs. Trust me, these cases are they're they're like really really plush inside. They're a really nice uh, uh, nylon, really nice zippers on it. Lots of room for pedals. But the sixty one note model um, is a backpack style case. So the last gig that I played before we went into lockdown, I played the the um, YC61 on it, and it was awesome just because yeah. I had to walk about 500 yards to get to the gig, and it was just me and the and the two speakers and just poof, right in. It was awesome. Got everything so, you need. Absolutely, nice. yeah, it was great. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And then um, I wanted to ask, too, so, I mean, obviously with Yamaha, you guys have, you know, a lot of different series of keyboards and, mm -hmm. you know, um, pianos and synthesizers and all that good stuff. Um, with the CP series, um, how does how does the uh, the YC series differ from the CP series? That's a great question. Um, so, uh, basically, look at it this way: the CP series is designed for a piano-focused musician. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, so in like you can look at the front panel here on on a, on a CP series, you have a dedicated acoustic piano section that would kind of be over here, and a dedicated electronic piano section. And the way that the acoustic piano section is set up is it's very acoustic piano focused, so it has immediate control over things that are specific to an acoustic piano, like okay. damper pedal resonance and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it also has more pianos and and a, and a few few additional pianos, like the Bosendorf or Imperial Grand. Um, that's in the CP series, not in the YC series. Um, there's also the SU7, which is a, our, our premium upright, in addition to the U1 that's in this one as well. So the, the idea is the more piano-focused of the CP series. Mm -hmm. um, when it goes to something like a YC series, well, we like to kind of call this more of a versatile kind of gigging keyboard because it has a little bit more versatility. It's not so completely piano-focused because it has this organ section right here, right, with the draw bars and everything in here. So you have this organ section. Um, it also has um, different technologies for creating sound than the CP. The CP series is all very sample-based, and it mm -hmm. is, um, uses what's what we call AWM2. That's our, our sample-based uh, engine that, that um, is in this one as well for the sounds like pianos and electric pianos and so on. But in the YC series, we have the VCM organ, virtual circuitry modeling. That is a modeling technology that in the past we've used to do stomp box style effects like phasers and flangers. Oh, um, yeah. VCM's, VCM's actually used on our, our, our super high-end Rivage console as well. So it, okay. it, 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 it's a modeling technology that was specifically for um, effects primarily before, but now what we've done is we've used the same modeling technology to do the organ modeling for the H model organs, which are the vintage draw bar organs. There's also FM synthesis in this instrument as well. There's three FM organs in here as well that do um, a pure sine wave organ and a couple of those electronic combo organs mm -hmm. um, from the 60s, you know. Um, but we also use FM in the uh, synthesizer pads, leads, and the classic DX electric piano sound. So three different types of, of, of tone generation technology. There's more effects in this instrument as well. There's, uh, I think, a total of 35 effects. And the keys section have their own separate effects for each key section. So if you have keys A and keys B here, you can see these lights coming on and off. Yeah. I'll turn on the one in here. So there's two separate effects in here that have 32 effects a piece then you have an effects section over here so there's more versatility with effects processing as well that's the whole point it's it's yeah. meant to be a versatile instrument that gives you a lot of the cool sounds but you don't have to worry about getting deep into the programming of it because it's all very much this one to one interface yeah. which brings me to the last one deep you want deep we have the montage and the modiex those are full on synthesizers yep. they have both fm and awm but you can edit everything down to the operator level there's w lots more effects on board there's a lot more multi channel um uh uh, output to the computer. Um, this is both uh, audio and MIDI interface. In fact, all of mm -hmm. these keyboards have USB audio and MIDI connectivity, which is pretty slick. But mm -hmm. when you go to a, something like a Montage or a, or a Modi X, that's multi-channel outputs. Montage can do up to 32 outputs. Yeah. But you also have complete control over the sound, complete editing control over all the parameters of all the individual effects. You have all the motion control synthesis, all that control. So it's deep. Synthesizer, yeah. that's yep. the biggest difference. So we have piano-focused, versatile, and deep. There you go. That's, yeah. that's kind of the, 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 how we break it down. And, and nice. you know which one's right for you? You know what's a good one? Just last thing I'll say is a YC is a great top keyboard, especially a YC61 because you have the organ stuff. Mm -hmm. And down here you can have you know, Modi X8 or a Montage yeah. 8. So, um, so they're, they're, they work really nicely together as well. You have stuff for different purposes, different tools for, um, for the gig or for the studio. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah. it's like <clears throat> you can kind of equate it to, you know, any other instrument that people are using when they're changing yeah. out guitars or basses or you know, that kind of thing. You know, yeah. the foundation of them all, you know, do primarily the same thing, but each one has its own kind of little special feature or, yep. or whatever it's, or sound, you know, that you want. Um, it kind of, it's like, to me, it, it, the, the YC series kind of took CP series ideas and montage series ideas and then streamlined them both. Exactly. 
it, into it the took, YC. It, exactly. That's a perfect way to look at it. Because what it did was it took that one-to-one interface that was so slick about the CP. You remember the CP73 and CP88 replaced the CP4. Uh-huh. And one of the, the CP4 was a great instrument, but one of the biggest um, complaints that we got about the CP4 was there's too much menuing on it. You have to get yeah. into things. And, and, and I certainly understood that, too. Um, and so when we released the CP series, we, we really learned a lot from basically what Reface is, which is a one-to-one interface, but, but small, right? Mm-hmm. We wanted a full-size instrument that had this ability to just do what I'm doing here. You know, I have the piano here, right? And I want to bring in, you know, a layer. I just turn on a switch. Oh, yeah. You know, and I want to add the organ to it. You know, you can kind of, I have it sort of using the organ as like a, a pad effect in this regard. But that's what I mean is being able to just turn on a switch to get what you want without doing lots of menu diving. And that's what, one of the things about the CP4 that, that although it's a great instrument, they, we just wanted to have a little bit more of a one-to-one interface. So, yeah. yeah, CP series. But then we also knew that the CP series is a little more focused on a single thing. What if you want to play organ? What if you want to play synth leads with monophonic because this has a mono mode on it, you know. So we wanted a little bit more of that versatility that you get from something like a um, a, a montage or mode EX, but not the depth. Yeah. So you're exactly right. That's a really great way to put it, actually. Cool. Yeah. And yeah. like, <clears throat> I think menu diving for some people is is awesome, and being sure. able to have the versatility and you know really customize your sound. But um, you know, especially if you're playing in in a band with a you know super versatile set list or something like that, it's like. You know, someone someone wants to hear a song that has organ in it. You don't want to spend five minutes trying to find that organ sound. You want to right, and 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 you know, if you're going to play an organ on it, you know, the one thing that's nice about organ in here is having these draw bars. Here, I'll just bring up an organ sound. You know, having physical draw bars is such an important part of that experience. So we put these cool draw bars, and you have an upper and lower manual. Mm-hmm. And by the way, you, you got to love the LED. The, this is yeah. such one of the coolest things about this is um, the, the LEDs on here are just really – you have up to seven colors you can choose. Oh, my so, goodness. So the, the design of this – this is I always like to point this out about this instrument is like, you know, guitar players are always talking about how – you know, a guitar plays, but they also sometimes like how it looks, mm-hmm. you know, the look of a guitar. And keyboard players are always sort of stuck with, you know, what you get, right? And yeah. But having something that's designed and looks slick, looks cool, is is one of the one of the benefits of this instrument. It just it looks so slick. To oh, yeah. A lot inspiring. of people might not want to admit it, but, you know, when they look at an instrument, or, you know, it does play a big part in, um, you know, in connecting with that instrument. Yep. You know, it if really I look does. at something and... and and it just looks crazy to me, and like it's a, it's a starship that I'll never be able to learn how to fly. I'm just like, right. I'm gonna step back, you know. But if something is laid out nice, it's the design is good. Like, yeah. it, 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 it attracts me into wanting to play that instrument. Absolutely. Um, and I, I think the YC series here. I mean, that just that looks awesome. Like, yep. I love the sliders with the, you know, how you can change the colors of the LEDs, but just the yeah. white sliders with the red one on the left. Like, yeah. So that's that's great. kind of that's that's sort of a. Um, the the look of that vintage draw bar yeah. instrument has this kind of a how of a, a setup the two red the two and they actually are um, they they sort of mean something you know you have the sixteen foot eight foot four foot two foot and one foot mm-hmm. so these are the fundamentals uh, of the organ right here the and and then the harmonics are these guys right here five and a third two and two thirds one and three fifths um, and you can totally you know hear it when you Oh yeah. So you hear me pulling in these different that's the whole the whole vibe of the organ. It's it's kind of the first additive synthesizer. You could look mm-hmm. at it like that. Um and uh that um what's the word I'm looking for? That tool, that setup, that uh <laughs> whatever I'm, rather than having a knob is what I'm trying to say here yeah. is that it, it th- this is more if you if you're really into organ, this is more familiar to you than trying to do it with a knob or something. So they yeah. really made them, and they also have this cool. If you didn't see this too, you can see underneath the uh, when I change like settings here, like I'll move it up to this guy here. You can see that you know they're physical draw bars, but you can see underneath them this little clear strip that's there. Uh huh. So you can still see when I move to another 
drawbar setting um, that it has uh, has different um, settings. You can see still see what the settings are, even though, in fact, it'd probably be better just to move to a different sound. But you see what I'm saying? Yeah. That little that little clear thing is just a nice little design thing, but it's also very useful to be able to see what the different settings are between different manuals or different organ sounds. Yeah, cool definitely. Design. Cool yeah. design. <clears throat> so so we kind of explored that the outside of the instrument and uh, kind of wanted to ask you about the uh, the triple sensor and why you know why okay. that's important. Yeah, so so this is this is a the CFX piano in here. Mm -hmm. And it's this is a specifically a piano thing. So the idea of the triple sensor is when you play a note on something that just has an on off sensor, mm -hmm. which most most keyboards have that, um, you have to lift your finger completely off of the key and have it return to the top before you can restrike the note. Mm -hmm. So that's the two sensor thing. Um, and what a triple sensor does is it allows you to restrike the note before it comes up from the bottom of the key stroke. So for fast, oh, yeah. repetitive strikes, that's really easy to do on this instrument. So it simulates a grand piano. That's how a grand piano works, too. Yeah. You can restrike the note when the key goes up, when you press the key on a grand piano, as it comes up. You can see my hand. Um, mm -hmm. Before the, the actual hammer drops again, you can restrike that note. Yeah, definitely. You can't do that with an upright piano just because of gravity. It's a different action. Uh -huh. So you can look at like the CP73, like an upright style action with the balanced hammer. It doesn't have the triple sensor, but you know, it, it, it still um, it still feels good, just like an upright does. But the, mm -hmm. the grand piano, you always, um, you know, you can really feel it on a real grand piano, that, uh, that, that ability to restrike the note. So what I like to do, what I used to do when I was in college, I used to like practicing on an upright piano mm -hmm. because I had to be a lot more precise about my playing on it. But on a gig, I would always want a grand piano because yeah, yeah. the grand piano always feels better. And I never really realized why that was back when I was in college. But now working for Yamaha and, and talking to piano technicians and this triple sensor, now I get it. That's yeah. why. It's because the grand piano action is a little bit more expressive because of that ability to restrike the note before it comes off the bottom. So this simulates that. Yeah. And, I mean, you can really... Plus, this action just feels great. Everybody that plays this action is like, whoa. This yeah. feels amazing. And it makes sense that we make great actions because we've been doing this for over you know, 100 years. 1887 is when Yamaha started as a company. Almost we started as old as grand... me. <laughs> That's how old I feel. <laughs> but it, like, 1900 is when we started making pianos. So we've been doing this for over 120 yeah. years. You know, so, so well, That's really like a mind-blowing yeah. thing for me. Like I never thought about. You know, the fast having fast action and being able to strike, you know, that key again, you know, yeah. while it's on its way up. I never never would have thought of that. And like yeah, you, you said, like you always like the feel of the grand piano better, but you didn't know why. You know, I feel like that's um I mean that that's something that can be super useful for people that practice on a grand piano and want to go it out and totally play. It totally is. Um, it, it totally is. And and another thing about this too, since we're talking about pianos a little mm -hmm. um the, the the reason why this is cool is because you can you can play so soft and never pull your your finger off the keys you can still kind of keep connected to it yeah now this instrument doesn't have what's called escapement escapement is that feeling when it when it cuts through a, a shim on the actual action itself and you can feel it sort of click before it goes down and it's a very piano thing and we have some instruments that do that this one doesn't do it and i'm so happy it doesn't and there's a reason why this is. I played a lot of pianos that great pianists have played before me, <laughs> like mm -hmm. you know, great jazz pianists or great classical pianists. Glenn Gould, for example. Last five recordings of Glenn Gould, the great Canadian pianist that recorded one of the, you know, best-selling classical music records ever, is the Goldberg Variations that he did. Well, his last five recordings were on a CF3S, a Yamaha CF3S. Now, I haven't actually played this, but I've talked to people that, that have seen this piano. It has very... His technicians went through and took that escapement out, huh. and it makes it easier to play. And that's why, you know, a pianist doesn't want things in the way of playing. And so for a stage piano, we really just didn't want to get into that and yeah. add that to it, although some people do like that authenticity, mm -hmm. and, and they do like the feeling of it. But for me, I'm just glad that we made the choice to make this action without that escapement. Um, so, and it really does. It gives me that feeling like it's a, uh, 
an instrument that's been um, modified for playing, for really expressive playing. Yeah. Um, just, you know, since we're talking about pianos and things. Because, uh, you know, I can sit here and play this f- forever, too, because of that triple sensor. I just... Yeah, I'm I'm that guy. I'm the pianist <laughs> in the. I was just gonna thing. say, I'm like, how can I how can I hire you just it's to me. play, you know, in the background of my my work day? You just know, call so me, so man. soothing. <laughs> it's, just call me. My Patreon is no. I, <laughs> but, uh, you want to yeah, hire Blake? Yeah. Here it is. Look in its comments below. No, yeah, I, I but I, I'll just do it for free for you, man. I like you. Oh, awesome! <laughs> Perks of the job. You know it. <laughs> yeah, but um. So, I mean, you, you want to hear some of the, since I'm in the piano section, let yeah. me play some of the pianos for you. Um, I'm in, actually, uh, this is the CFX. This is the one I use the most for everything. Um, I was just watching, um, really sad this year for us at Yamaha was the loss of Chick Corea, um, who was, uh, you know, one of my personal favorites uh, in music and a wonderful human being. I had the opportunity to meet him a few times over the years and he's just, it's such an honor. But I watched his video on the CFX Mm -hmm. um, that I highly recommend anybody just, if you put in YouTube, Chick Corea Yamaha CFX, you'll find his talking about that instrument. And he said, you know, I've been Yamaha for a long time. I've always loved the instrument. And uh, before that was the previous model, the CF3, which is a great instrument. But when I got this CFX, they had totally made it so much better. It just has this sound that's so gorgeous. And what he, I know, and me too about the CFX that is really cool is that it doesn't have a lot of what's called note bloom. So mm-hmm. it's it's not, it's it still is resonant, but... The main thing about the CFX is that they engineered it to have a strong fundamental. So that means the note you play and not all the harmonics around it kind of sticks out a little bit. It's not abrasive, but it tends to pop a little bit. So when you play a lot of chords that, you know, that are more sort of uh, uh, dissonant chords like that, those little notes just pop, 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 yeah. pop right out. It's, so it's great for recording. CFX is one of the only pianos in the world that can... Um, that can uh, project over a symphony orchestra acoustically. And it's not because it's louder. It's because of that, that fundamental. Yeah. It's the reason why, um, you know, when you go to an orchestra and you see them tune, they tune to the oboe. And the reason why they do that is because the oboe has a similar thing. It cuts right through the, the orchestra. It's not necessarily loud. It just has yeah. a strong fundamental. So that's what the CFX is all about. And the, the thing that's great about it is that it's... It's also very expressive. The real one totally is. And this one totally nails that feeling that you can play very softly yeah. and get this gorgeous sound. But I still feel like... Now, I'll move to the next sound here. So this is a C7. Um, and I should point out something that happened there. So you hear that? I just changed sounds, but I didn't cut off the previous sound. So there's seamless sound switching between what we call live set sounds. And that's what you're seeing here, what I'm stitching here. It is basically where I... It saves the front panel settings, and you just recall them at the push of a button. That's so, awesome. Yeah, it's, it's great for anybody that's playing live that wants yeah. to move from one section of a tune to another. Uh, in the worship community, big deal. You know, you really want to have that when you're moving from, say, a song, and then you're trying to go to something that's softer right before the pastor speaks. You want to have that connection between the sounds so you don't cut anything off. It's just smooth and seamless. But um, the next piano is this... This is a CF, a C7. So a C7 is similar to the CFX, but this is an even brighter sound. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually have taken the tone down a little bit. Um, you have control over that. I prefer the C7 like here. It still has that cut. You can really hear it. But if I turn the tone up, You know, it really has that bite to it. Yeah. Great for gospel. C7 is a 7-foot, 6-inch soundboard. Or 7-4, seven, sorry, 7-foot, seven 4-inch soundboard. So it's not like the big 9-foot concert grand like a CFX. But that right there is the most recorded piano in the history of music. The C7, absolutely it is. It's in so many recording studios. Yeah. So that brightness is really nice to have when you're recording because if you want to, you know, it, it's easier to EQ when you have all the stuff that you want to EQ around. It's It sits nicely in a mix. So C7 we have in here too. Um, S700. So 
So this is a darker piano. This is um, another seven foot piano that we had in the S90 ES that we added um, to this instrument. Uh, just a better, you know, a new version of it. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it's kind of a nice dark all around piano. Um, the live CF3, this is probably the brightest piano. This one came in from the CP300. This is our previous model to the CFX. The reason why we put this in here is because a lot of people really like this, this CF3 sound, um, especially people um, that are playing rock gigs or worship community. This is big in the worship community because it just it gets a name. You know, People play yeah. a lot of that uh, CP300, but that's a big, heavy instrument with speakers built in. So this is in a lighter, this, you know, the, even, even this one's 41 pounds, so super light. But we added this in the previous, in, in this, in a OS update 1.1 that we just released, which brings me just quickly to another thing. We have OS updates that happen with this instrument on a fairly regular basis, like every six to eight months, let's say. Mm -hmm. And it adds new sounds and new features with these OS updates. So we just added this sound with that update was the, this live CF3. Which to totally, man. It's a crazy world we live in now where you can update your uh, piano. Yeah, I know, it's great. <laughs> so another one in here, since we're talking pianos. Mm -hmm. This is the Nashville C3. So a C3 is a six foot one inch smaller piano. Okay. This piano is has a, um, this is a character-rich piano. That's how I like to put it. Meaning that it was, you hear how it's, it sounds like it's been in the studio for a little bit. Yeah. Waiting for somebody to come in and play it. Yep. The thing that's interesting about this is we recorded this in Nashville um, at the, uh, at our Yamaha Artist Relations. We have, they have a recording studio there. So mm -hmm. they sampled it there, but they used a tape emulation system to give it analog tape sound so it has this cool uh -huh. warm <laughs> sound to it but it's great it's great for country obviously nashville c3 it's yep. great for um for, for just stuff that you want something that's not this perfect nine foot concert grand mm -hmm. so, you know i certainly love a nine foot concert grand that's perfect but there's sometimes you know uh, my my friend Phil Clendenin, great friend of mine who worked for Yamaha for years, he still is uh, bad Mister on our uh, Yamaha synth site. If you go up there to our forum, uh -huh. uh, but we were talking about the um, the next one here. Th so the, this is the U1. It has a similar quality. It's been played in, right? But let's talk about the honky tonk piano. You know the one that everybody. So if you were gonna do a um, a uh, like a uh, honky tonk style Western sound. Would you mm -hmm. pick a nine foot concert grand that's in perfect tune? No, you wouldn't. When you need a honky tonk piano, <laughs> only a honky tonk piano will do. When yep. you need an upright piano that's been that has has some character to it, like this one does. <laughs> it oh, has yeah. that sound to it. And the other thing about it, if you want to do the, uh, you know, you put some chorus on this guy, it can totally, in fact, here, ch check it out how easy it is to put chorus on something. So I have an effect over here. There are already two effects in here. One of them is a damper pedal resonance effect, mm -hmm. and the other one is a uh, compressor. So I have a little bit of, uh, of, you know, some things to it. But let's say I want another effect for a chorus effect if I want to do that upright pop sound, cold play kind of sound. Mm -hmm. Well, I can assign this what I call the utility effect to do that. So my effect is right here. I'll find something that's a chorus effect. There it is right here. So if I want to, like, maybe adjust the rate down. And I love how fast that is. I don't have to go into a menu to do this. I'm just, yeah. I, you know, like, I, that's too much, right? No, ah, no, too much. But I can turn it down <laughs> really quick. Now I have a pop piano sort of sound yeah. in here. Well, um, you know, oh, that kind of stuff. Uh, so we're talking about effects. Um, so that, let's talk about reverb. Can you adjust the reverb kind of, you know? Yes. Is it just as easy as how you adjusted the chorus? Sure. Yeah. So check this out. So here's the, here's the sound here. 
So this is actually a layered piano sound. It's a single sound, but it has a layer on it too. Mm -hmm. Now let's say on this sound, I have the, the, the reverb over here. Well, it already has kind of a synth sound, so I want to pull the reverb down on that one. So how this works is the reverb's over here. I can turn it on right here, and it turns the, that reverb section on. Mm -hmm. And then as I select the, the different um, uh, sections here, you have key A and key B, and then the organ section, right? So let's say key A, I want zero reverb. So right now, there's no reverb on it. That, that hangover is from the actual synth sound, right? But, I did, but reverb would have made it a little bit too uh, muddy, right? Mm -hmm. so, so this is a... So there's no reverb at all on the sound here. It just have that thing. Now, I'm going to go next door here to this B section. So this is a, a synth sound, right? Okay, mm -hmm. with this one, I do want a lot of reverb on it. So I'm going to go ahead and crank that one up for just keys B. As opposed to... And I'm going to actually show you something else here. Right now, it's, it, I, I, I kind of don't like the envelope on it. It's a little too... Hangs over too much. So I can go over here to the EG that's right here and turn... And I can adjust that so I don't have as much release um, with a single, a single knob here. Mm -hmm. um, but I can add tons of reverb to it here as well, right? So if you go through keys A, keys A has none, keys B has a lot, right? And then the organ section, turn that on. Well, let's say I want uh, all the way up on the organ section. So each one can have its own send level. Keys A, you can see right there with the LED, right? It's... You can see it here. Yep. It's zero, right? Keys B, it's 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 up here, right? And there it is here. And then organ section, it's all the way up. So you have separate yeah. sends for each of the sections. Or lastly, let's say, well, I don't want on that. If I have all the the uh, the um, lights here illuminated by hitting this send button until it's all illuminated. Now, if I just move it, everybody gets reverb now. Now everybody's got reverb. So you can do it individually per section or all at once. Again, without ever having to go menu, dive, or any of that yeah. kind of stuff. <laughs> Folder so 2, reverbs, yeah. hall reverbs. The, and then you get 12 different versions of that. <laughs> yep. I love it. Uh, and you see how, how cool it is. Like, you know, here's the piano and synth sound. Right? Where I can go, here, I'll go back to my CFX. How easy it is to just add a section, just turn it on. And you, you notice that when I hit this button, right now it's selecting keys A, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, and, it, and you see the stuff for keys A. When I turn this on, it'll automatically select keys B so I can see what's assigned to that. I can always go back here to keys A to see what's, what my sections and my selection for, or my, my settings for like tone, volume, the EG or filter settings or whatever. Keys B, oh, I need another effect on there so I can turn that on here. So it's just super fast to do that. And now I have, and if I realize that I kind of want that keys B to be a little, a little not as loud, there's your volume control for just that section. Mm -hmm. And tone control. And filter if I want this a little brighter. So you have single knob filter control per section, or in, in this section as well. <coughs> So it's like total versatility. I mean, that's exactly perfect. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly what, what what we're trying to go for here is to have the ability to shape the sound, to have a lot of different sounds available to you, right? Mm -hmm. But um, but not make it super deep as far as menu diving. And I can show you that we can get in and do some things in here, but but you never feel like you're you're like, what was I doing again? You know, when you start editing on some deep synthesizers, you can kind of get lost in the editing. Mm -hmm. This is still very, very fast. Like if I wanted, you know, there's how you get into it. That's why I have this close up here yeah. and this camera here so you can see in what it, you know, when I want to do that, I can show you this as well. But, um, but the idea is like having the one-to-one -one interface to do things fast with switches on and off and so on. Yeah. And I feel like, um, you know, kind of completely opposite <coughs> of, of the live application, um, but for like writing at home or in the studio, it's, you know, inspiration is like, you know, at least for me, it's, it's there and then it's gone. Yep. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I get it, you know, I want to be able to, and I hear a sound in my head, I want to be able to get to that sound as quickly as possible, you know. Absolutely. Well, one of the things I really dig about this instrument, since you're talking about studio, and I'm going to see if I have it just sitting close to me here. 
Of course, I don't. <laughs> but um, ah, I'm looking for, I have my iPhone right here, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the things I really think is slick about this instrument is that it's a USB audio and MIDI interface. So in the studio, when I record, um, you know, I, I'm a Cubase user. So mm -hmm. when I use Cubase with this instrument, I will do things like if I want to do tracking, I can record MIDI, right, into Cubase via USB. And I get my MIDI kind of the way I want it. And then what I do is I'll, I'll record the audio of the MIDI track. So I'll render that track as mm -hmm. audio. So uh, all on one cable. So I do that. Let's say I want to do a piano section, an organ section, and an E. P section and have three different stereo tracks. Um, now, it's not a multi-channel audio interface, right? So I'm going to record one thing at a time. But once I get the MIDI where I want it, I'll record the audio with the same cable mm -hmm. and then put the MIDI track into a folder and just mute the folder. So I always have it there if I yeah. want to go back to it. And then I'll record the electric piano part. And then I'll record you know, the organ part, right? And do it each just different takes. And the thing that's cool with modern DAWs now is that once you do that, you can still um, generally change the pitch, or ra rather the tempo of the of the audio track without changing the pitch, because mm -hmm. almost all of them now, Cubase has a really good algorithm for doing that. So you still have the kind of the flexibility of MIDI if you want to play in like maybe a guitar track, but you want to bring the tempo down to record it because you're not a guitar player, right? Mm -hmm. So. So you can still do that with this, but it's really elegant how you can record directly into something like Cubase. But when you just have an idea in your head, there are tons and tons and tons of apps for the iPhone. Yeah. That when you take the lightning output, right, there's a lightning to USB connector, and I'll use that with this as well. It's iOS compatible as well, so I can record audio directly into my phone if I just have an idea. I can just take the USB cable right into my iPhone or an iPad and boom, boom record. So it's really flexible in that regard as well. That's awesome. <coughs> it kind of reminds me of um, <clears throat> I do this I do this every stream with with uh, uh, instruments that aren't guitars, but I always relate it to guitars somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like reamping. I feel like kind of when you're recording yeah. guitars, sure. You know, you're taking a clean signal and stashing it kind of, and right. then you have your recorded signal. And then if you want to go back and change stuff, you can because let's be exactly. honest, we all we all record <coughs> things, and then you know two days later we're like, oh man, we want. You yep. really want to change that, you know, it sounds one way, you know, when you're recording it another way, you know, however many days later, but, Absolutely. uh, yeah, I, mean, I feel like that just provides so much, um, almost just like peace of mind, you know, when you're recording. Yeah. You know, it totally does. You know, and speaking of guitar, that, that's one thing I kind of dig about this instrument too, is that it has that stomp box style guitar ishness. I don't yeah. know how to explain it better than that. Uh -huh. It's not so keyboardy, you know, which to me would be that editing part. Every time people think synthesizers or keyboards, there's always this idea that, oh, there's going to be some technology involved here. You know? And <laughs> with this, certainly there's technology involved, but, but there's that immediacy that, that, that you get from something like a stage keyboard, from, and it's that guitar thing. That's, that's, it appeals to that in me, you know? I guess but that definitely. sort of makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess while we're on the subject, um, you know, if, you brought up stomp boxes. Um, as far as like the effects processing, I know we've heard like some oh. reverb, some chorus. Do you want to kind of dive into that yeah, a little bit? For absolutely. Uh, now dig this. This is. Let me find. Uh, um, so I'm going through it through my live sets here, mm -hmm. and uh, since you brought that up, I got to kind of look for something in here. But um, but you know what? If I can't immediately find it, it's so easy. Here, this is what I was looking for. Just my straight up clean guitar. Right, and this is very much just a. Now, the thing that's slick about this instrument is that I have right now, this has a compressor and a chorus on it, all right? So I'm going to just get rid of the, the, uh, the chorus for now. So right now, it's very much a super clean, and I'm going to make it so clean by turning all the reverb off. Okay, so we just have the very basic mm -hmm. guitar sound. Over here in the speaker amp section, okay, this is where the rotary speaker lies, and right now... This speaker amp section is associated to the organ, so I'm using it in that in that setup. In fact, I'll just turn it off. Right, so we have. Okay, well, I'm going to take the rotary. You know, I'm not going to. This is not for organ right now. This is just guitar. Mm -hmm. So turn my guitar section on again, and then point that speaker amp at keys A. Right. So now I have. It's the rotary speaker that's actually associated to the guitar now. Huh. You can hear it when I. 
Yeah. Which might be something I might use. And, and I'll show you a way where I could use use both distortion in a second. But now if I hit rotary, so rotary A is your clean rotary speaker, your basic one, I guess. Rotary B is a rotary speaker that has that has a transistor preamp in front of it. So it has a little bit of yeah. distortion in there, but I'm not going to use that one either. And I also have tone here, by the way, you can see that as well. Now I'm going to move into lead, crunch, and double. So these are the amp simulators. So there's VCM amplifier simulation in here as well. So I can adjust the tone of that if I want to... If I don't want it as bright or turn it up here. And the lead is the most present one of them all. The crunch... Has a little bit of a chunkier mid rangey thing. And we're getting, there's no reverb, right? We're still very clean yeah. here. Okay, and then double is probably the darkest of them all. Okay, now let's say what I really wanted to do, and case, by the way, the last one, case is is for electric pianos. It's a, it's a speaker and uh, preamp of an electric piano. So, but I'm gonna go past that right now. I wanna use that rotary speaker. Okay, cause that, that seemed kinda cool. And maybe mm -hmm. pull the drive down, a little bit of tone. But wait, I still want some distortion. Okay, that's what this effect's gonna do now. So I have two effects in here as well. And by the way, I have one more effect if I wanted to apply that to that key sound too. So let's say I do want to have a, um, I'll put distortion in this one here and I'll, I'll leave the chorus here. So check it out. So I have, so there's my, now right now I have the, the, the compressor feeding in, this is the signal flow here. Mm -hmm. Well, let's say what I want to do is I, uh, I kind of want to have these two swapped. So there's a whole series of, of different um, really fast shortcuts that you can use with this exit button. So all I want to do is just swap the, the order of these two. Uh -huh. So I want chorus here, right? Compressor here. Well, hold this down and just touch there. Oh. I just swapped them. Here, I'll swap them again. See how that's they crazy. work? That's crazy. It's super easy. So now, okay, that's, maybe that's the sound that I really wanted was that one right there. Okay, we're going to go with that. So now I have rotary speaker, chorus, compressor, boom. Now I have this effect here, and you'll look inside the screen here, and you see me going through. See the, all the, the stuff that's in here? Cross yeah. delay, pedal wah, so you can assign it to a pedal, and you wah. I can show you that uh -huh. in a second. There's so many cool little things about this instrument, man. That's crazy. There you go. See the small distortion right there? Uh -huh. There's one that's called British Lead. Okay, I want that one. And then, you know, now it's just a matter of tweaking things how I want them. Maybe it's too dark now. Maybe I don't need all these effects. Mm -hmm. uh, but it certainly... Maybe I want some reverb. No. The rotary speaker in there, too. Dude, that's awesome. That's, isn't that cool? I mean, and it's a keyboard. Yeah, I was but just going to say. <laughs> but that's, that's, that, that's what I'm talking about. When you have this instrument, you have that stomp box kind of uh, feeling or, you know, vibe yeah. that keyboard players g sometimes don't have access to all the time. Yeah. But, but this, this kind of is yeah. all about that. I mean, you can really do some – I mean, that's just a little bit in here. I mean, there's just some cool – there's so much coolness about this instrument – as far as just getting to things like that. I want to show you something else, too. You know, so this is a synth lead sound. Uh -huh. And it's monophonic. So we have a mono mode here, something that the CP doesn't have because piano focus, right? Mm -hmm. Versatile. So. And portamento. Yeah. Now, this is a pure FM sound. It's called FM synth lead. Now, what I want to show you, and this is, this is where it, some of the editing happens in here, but I'm going to just show you really quickly how easy it is to, to, to do some basic FM edits that, that are pretty powerful but cool. So I go in here to sound, so that's what we want, and then it has the settings for each one. So we'll go keys A settings, 
And right now, that's where you set mono. So I had it in mono mode, right? Um, portamento, I have a little bit of portamento in here. There's the time setting right there, 23. And the, the switch is on and that kind of stuff. But what I want to get to is this thing called FM Unison. And what FM Unison is, it's something that we inherited from kind of our, our, our DX and SY, kind of those, those earlier FM synthesizers, that does a chorusing effect by sort of doubling the, the, the operator. Mm -hmm. and, and detuning it a little bit. And it just gives it some fatness. So, yeah. so there's two unison, right? So I've just doubled it. And then four unison. You can hear it immediately. That's with off. And here's four unison. Oh, yeah. So it's a little fatter now, and I won't, I'll have it restrike. But it gets really cool when you go to detune. So now oh, I yeah. have that detune. So and then down here is spread, and it gives it kind of a, a, a stereo, a fuller. So I've changed that sound, and I don't have any effects on. Notice that? No yeah. effects. So it's just listening just to the FM in here. Now I'll turn on a second sound. So that's another FM sound that I just dropped an octave. So I have this cool. So coming up with a cool lead sound is, and this is just the 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 basic kind of editing in here. Mm -hmm. If I go in here and I start turning on things like, well, that's a low pass filter effect. So if I want to have a little bit of an analog sort of resonant sound. Same thing with this one. I want to turn on these two effects. So this one has that British lead sound and a phaser. It, I could go on and on. You know what I mean? Oh, so, yeah. Okay, one other thing. Um, just real quick to uh, show you another slick thing is uh, so it was interesting. We were we we have our SoundCloud. It's it's just SoundCloud at Yamaha Synths. Uh, www.soundcloud.com/slash Yamaha Synth. Mm -hmm. So we have a SoundCloud account where we have a big podcast up there for people to check out. We have like over fifty different podcasts where it's either me or me and Nate talking to artists, talking to sound designers, and so on. Mm -hmm. It's also where we have a bunch of uh, sound demos. So we had a bunch of sound demos for the YC up there, and we keep looking and seeing which sound demos are getting the most traction. So obviously things like the organs. People want to hear the organs, so that gets uh -huh. a lot of plays. People want to hear the piano, so that gets a lot of plays. But one of the ones that got the highest amount of plays is this steel string guitar sound that I huh. did a little demo for called Spanish Steel. <laughs> So it's a nice, and I have delay on it. It's a, it's actually a tempo delay. Check this out. Three, four, four. So I have tap tempo delay. Uh huh. <laughs> it's nice to have that. Boy, let yeah. me tell you. So what I did was, now I turned on another sound in here. It's a sign lead sound, but it has this cool pad thing. You know? Yeah. Now, this is what I think was really cool is that this is the FM organ. So I'm using the organ in this case, not traditionally how you think like, you know, you know the, the, the organ style thing, you know, mm -hmm. three down, going to smoke. You know, it, it, this is more like a pad sound in here. Hear it in there? Yep. Uh, And then I still have the rotary speaker thing, uh -huh. so I can speed up, speed up the rotary, bring it down a little bit. So it has it adds that that sound to it, but it's not it's not the main focus. Yeah, it's it's this guitar kind of. It just adds a lot of body, I feel like. Yeah, to the, isn't it to cool? Sound. So I think that's why it just is a cool sounding sound, and people listen to it. But again, it just shows and highlights the versatility yeah. of this instrument. We've gone through synth leads. We haven't even talked about organ. <laughs> and the organs are awesome too, but but I think it's it's important to really um, to think about this as what it is. It says over here you can't see it, but it says stage keyboard. It mm -hmm. doesn't say organ. Yeah, it's so much more. It's truly a stage keyboard, a versatile stage keyboard that also has an organ section. But before we go, we probably should play a couple of organs in here. I'll just play through them. So this one's your. This one, if I had a bass player. So I have my lower manual here. 
in the organ section. It has, you know, this setting in here that's sort of a, a little bit more of a, a higher kind of thing, but I also moved it up two octaves because mm-hmm. I have a bass player in this thing. I'm not kicking bass in this one, so I have... Now, check this out. Now, if I'm playing two-handed here and I want to speed up that rotary speaker, wouldn't it be awesome if I had a foot switch down here that I could assign, see, to rotary speaker speed, which I have. So. So I can speed it up and slow it down. So there's that's a s- organ split, two manual, right? Mm-hmm. I have one in here that's... So that was the H1 organ. I should talk a little bit. H1 is sort of like your perfect studio uh, vintage drawbar organ. Mm-hmm. H2, you hear that little sound in there, by the way? Here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to highlight this for a second. Sound. I'm getting closer to my computer. Like, that's going to help me. Just check this out. Check, you're you're going to hear it right now. So I'm going to go over here to background noise. I'm going to turn up the level. So that's a lot of oh, background yeah. noise. Yeah. Check it out. So you can hear it. Nice. Because the real rotary speaker, it is a physical thing that actually moves air. And it's the Doppler effect that it's doing. But check it out when you stop it. It slows down. So now it's just sitting here. Now let's wind it back up again. That's incredible. (laughs) It's cool, isn't it? It's it's just this is... I could just do that for hours. Well, (laughs) well, and it's nice to have it in there a little bit. So I keep it in there. It's not so it's so overwhelming, you know, but it's but it's still there. So you have control over the background noise of the rotary speaker, and then you have control over the level of the horn and rotor. Uh-huh. So the horn would be the high frequency, and the rotor would be the low frequency. And in this case, what I did was I wanted a darker organ sound, um, so I set the horn level here to 56, and the rotor level is at 115. So it's much the low frequency is really what's what's coming out on this one. But this is H2. This one is more like a organ that's been um, sitting in a club for a while. Okay. It has a sound. And yeah. they all have different, different characters to them, different things like leakage sounds and stuff like that, which is the sound that you get here. I'll turn up the leakage on this one. Organ settings, leak level. You'll hear this, this uh, well, what, what the sound is like. Basically, the components of the organ, one of them leaks into the other one. So it huh. creates this. Oh, yeah. So that's one that may, might need to be serviced. But you've heard lots of. But I've heard a lot of recordings that have really that kind of sound to them. Yeah. So, but that's, that's the H2 organ in here. H3 is more of a uh, more of a tweaked organ. It has a very specific kind of a uh, um, uh, percussion sound here. It's like a rock organ that's tweaked out, basically. Yeah. Um, and I, I use it for for lots of high frequency stuff. Um, Okay, next to that, you have the F organ. So this is a FM synthesis now. The other ones are VCM organs. So. <laughs> so the F organ is a sine wave organ. And on these FM organs, you, you're only using these eight draw bars. It's eight operator synthesis. Mm-hmm. But I love this organ. And a lot of the gospel guys really dig this organ because it has such a big low end. Yeah. So so they really like the fact that it doesn't have what's called fold back, which you kind of hear in the in fold back is this sound. Let me get it. Let me get a good one that shows you that real quick. All right. Eh. I'll come back to that because I want to kind of move on with this one. Yeah. But fold back basically it repeats the octave. So so you okay. hear it kind of change the octave as you yeah. move up in the left hand. But with this one it doesn't have that, so it has this big fat consistent low end. Um, you have combo organ, 60s style combo organ. F2 is like the, as it says here, British. Mm-hmm. 66 British. Man, it sounds like 66 British organ playing. Yeah, that kind of. 
Um, now, next to that is the F3, which is Argento, Dario Argento, great Italian director. F3 is the Italian organ, right? Still a combo organ, but the Italian-style organs are a little bit brighter. They're mm -hmm. more of kind of a sawtooth waveform as opposed to like a pulse wave. So, but this would be if you're playing a gig and you have to play 60s covers. Yeah. We, we, we gave you that option in here. So the last thing I'll say about the organ section, you have rotary speed control here, um, control over upper and lower manuals, right? You, right now, this is split, right? I can go here and just have just one of the layers active, or I can have them split, which is what I had it set up in here. Mm -hmm. You have vibrato and chorus, three different types for um, chorus and vibrato, which is like the vintage drawbar organ, you know. Um, and then percussion, second and third. So you have, you know, the things that make an organ section and organ section are right there. Very familiar to anyone that's an organist yeah. right in there. Which makes it easy, too. So if this was like a like a club keyboard, you know, like a house keyboard or something, and someone came in to play something, I mean, they could pick it up pretty easily, I'm assuming. Absolutely. But, you know, another thing in here is that if I need to have, I'm going to totally shift gear. This is the yeah. point of the versatility. So I have a... Full-on brass section. If yeah. I want to hit that B section, I'm going to drop it an octave. So one of those horns is now. As opposed to. Yeah. So epic. So, yeah. <laughs> or, or, wait, how about just octave strings? Again, versatile. That was my whole point. Yeah, going I keep, that way. Like the whole time during this stream, I keep thinking of things you can use this keyboard for. And another one of those things was like, like sound design or, or scoring, you know, movie yep. scoring and things like that. I mean, you could have yeah. this in, at your home studio, or you know. I mean, check this out. The thing is, like, for you know, it's not a synthesizer, right? But mm -hmm. so I've got that. You know, if I, I, I almost played. I'll change the change a little <laughs> bit. Anyway. <laughs> there we um, go. Hey. But check this out. So I have the single filter control here. So I can immediately kind of get it. That's a great synth brass sound, man. Yeah, that sounds so, awesome. And I, and I have still the effects here that I can use. Mm -hmm. You know, there's still... You can go so many different ways with this. You know, different synth pads. That one has a uh, reverse reverb yeah. on it. So this one, I love this one because it... <laughs> <But it's laughs> I really, love that. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yep. That's so, super cool. Again, versatility. That's the name of the game with the YC yeah. series. It's just all sorts of different sounds you can do. and so. I love it, man. Yeah, man. Well, thanks for thanks for stopping in and you know yeah, showing us around the YC series and um, you know answers some questions. Hopefully, uh, some from from people in the chat there. Uh, if we didn't answer your question, uh, we'll try and get to it and write to it. Um, but yeah, you can get these keyboards at Zounds right now. Uh, all three of them: the 61, 73, and 88. Right? That, those are the the three different sizes, right? Um, yes, it is. Sorry, I just realized I had my screen pulled over a little bit, so now uh -huh. I see. Oh, look, there's comments. <gasps> oh. <laughs> I think I was looking at them. I think we answered them, you know, as we yeah, were kind of going. I, I think so too. I, I think uh, he said, uh, "Yeah, no, yeah." I, I think we did. I see the thing about reverb, so we can adjust yeah. reverb independently or yep. at the same time. Um, anyway, I just get caught. You know, I can get carried away. Plus, Zounds, oh, yeah. man, I love this. Is a great. I love this store. I will never forget the time that I went to the uh, to the the. There was a call center location in downtown Chicago. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know if it's still there. You may have moved it, but I remember getting pizza there. Uh huh. That was, that, and it wasn't the Chicago style. But I yeah. I will never forget that. But I'm a big. I also like Lou Malnati's a lot. Oh yeah. That's funny. Tell. We talked about food in the last stream <sighs> I did. Well, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I well, Chicago has such good food, but yeah, the pizza is really pizza is amazing, and you know we can't wait to have you back, Blake, and I you know, and the rest of the back. team. Yeah, man. So 
hopefully we'll see you soon in person but you know for now thanks for joining us virtually yeah, thank and you so much here i'll move to my uh i'll move to my uh there i am so yes thank you so much i really appreciate taking the time and you guys taking the time to have me here to talk about this awesome keyboard so totally. really appreciate it Absolutely. awesome all righty well thanks for watching everybody and uh we'll see you soon cool thanks see ya